Hello, my name is Father Alex Harb with St. Charbel Maronite Mission of Louisiana in Baton Rouge. Today is the feast of the transfiguration of the Lord when Jesus took Peter and James and John up the mountain and was transfigured, metamorphose, before them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Mark, chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. And he, Jesus, said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death, until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a mountain, a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice, This is my beloved Son, this is my Son the Beloved, listen to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In this passage, Jesus promises his disciples, Some of you will see the kingdom of God come in power. And then, six days later, Peter, James, and John see the kingdom of God come in power. And what is the kingdom of God? It is a person. It is Christ himself. It is Christ who is the temple. It is Christ who is the kingdom. He is the head of the body and we are the body. Then we see him with Elijah and Moses. Now, in 1 Kings, there is a time when Elijah goes up a mountain. And what is he doing? He's trying to meet the Lord. This is in 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. And it says, there was a big earthquake. There was a mighty wind. There was a fire. We're seeing some of these natural disasters. And it says the Lord was not in the fire, the earthquake, the wind. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? So Elijah, what are you doing? Peter didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say. He was terrified. And so we see Elijah, that he encounters God not in the way that we would expect. Just as Peter and James and John encounter God See the kingdom of God come in glory, not in the way that they would expect. Then we also see Moses in Exodus chapter 24. And it's Moses and a man and two brothers and there's some other people, 70 of Israel's elders. So it says, the Lord said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron the high priest, and Nadab and Abihu, two brothers, who are the sons of Aaron, and 70 of Israel's elders. You are to worship at a distance. Moses alone shall approach the Lord, but the others must not come near. And 
Then Moses went up with Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was a work like a pavement made of sapphire, as clear as the sky itself. But God did not lay his hand on the nobles of Israel. So there's a terrifying sight, just as Peter was terrified. But he was safe. They saw him, and they ate and drank. There is this idea of a peace in the presence of God. That what they had expected to be cut down, to be destroyed, did not happen. And so what do we see in the Feast of the Transfiguration? First, we see that Jesus is greater than Moses and Elijah. That Moses and Elijah see God that Jesus is God, that Moses and Elijah experience the presence of God, but Jesus is God present. Second, if we want to get to know God, it can be helpful for us, like Elijah, to wait for the silence like Moses, to go off from the camp, to go to a place where we can have time. Like Peter and James and John, to draw close to the one who we know has access to God the Father. So, on this Feast of the Transfiguration, It is my encouragement to all of you first to take some time in silence for prayer. Second, to surround yourselves with friends like Peter, James, and John who want to pray with you, who want to grow in a relationship with God. Third, to never stop learning about the faith, to read the scriptures that first we might know about God, but that ultimately we might come to know him. God bless you. And I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.